Welcome to today's episode for people interested in the extraordinary yet ancient and often long forgotten stuff. This is your host, Joseph Schinwald from homebythebeach.com and our guest today is Faisal Hock. Uh, the topic today, everything connects. So let me tell you a little bit about Faisal. Incredible, impressive. Uh, Faisal Hock was born in Bangladesh and found himself in the boardrooms of Fortune 100s by the time he was 27. As a thought leader, his work has appeared in the Wall Street Journal, Business Week, Forbes, Fox, CBS, etc. And he was named one of the top 100 most influential people in technology and one of the top 100 thought leaders. As a thought leader, he has authored a number of award-winning books on leadership, innovation, mindfulness, resilience, organizational transformation, and entrepreneurship, including, now this is very, very impressive, including the number one Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestseller, Lift, fostering the leader in you amid revolutionary global change. But if that wasn't enough, just one book as number one Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestseller, he wrote another one. And that one is now number two Wall Street Journal bestseller and USA Today bestseller. And that one is called Everything Connects, Cultivate, Cultivating Mindfulness, Creativity and Innovation for Long-Term Value. And we will talk about Everything Connects today. His work has appeared in Fast Company, Business Insider, The Wall Street Journal, all uh, famous and incredible high-profile uh, publications. He says... A quote before I start my first asking my question. He says, I'm originally from Bangladesh. When I was in high school, I did a lot of reading that were written in Bengali, my native language. It is a derivative of Sanskrit. There were a lot of mindfulness, Buddhist, Sufi and Hindu influences in what I was reading. Many years later, when I was in Japan for the first time, I took a tea tour and traveled through various parts of the country that tourists just don't want vis don't visit. I ended up at a Buddhist monastery, and it triggered a profound internal transformation. So this is uh, Faisal's bio, and I have to say, when I first read it, I was completely swiped away. <laughs> so Faisal, our topic today is Everything Connects. Tell us about yourself, Faisal. How did it all get started with you? Well, Joseph, I, I mean, that was a very nice and warm welcome. Uh, I don't know how do I top that, uh, you know, but uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, uh, listen, how, you know, I mean, we all go through various stages of our lives. Um, when you're young, um, you are, uh, you know, many of us are very adventurous and you have a lot of uh, ambition. Uh, and as you go, through life, uh, you mature and you learn different things. So uh, in my case, uh, you know, uh, similar things has happened. Uh, when I was 17, 18 years old, I left uh, home uh, to come to U.S. to for my studies. Um, and I studied uh, electrical engineering and computer science. And I was a typical uh, entrepreneurial type, uh, technology entrepreneurial type, who started uh, building a technology product, uh, raise money, build companies, uh, fail, succeeded, got fired from my own company, built another one, so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, I've, I had uh, the utter privilege and, and uh, luck uh, to be able to work with some of the most talented people, uh, both in Fortune 500 companies, but also in thought leadership space and academia and and other other uh, kind of multitudes of background. Um, and now that I'm in my 50s, you know, and it, this transformation that you talked about, you know, this kind of started about 10, 15 years ago when I was uh, not, you know, I was feeling not so fulfilled, uh, you know, just chasing the, the quote unquote entrepreneurial dream. And I was, I was, um, I got very focused on impact and how do I create more impact for others and, and. Uh, at the same time, you know, is I kind of had, to, you know, I was going back to my roots of reading these old uh, 
literature uh, that comes from my culture. And I had opportunity to travel to Japan. Uh, I had a wonderful mentor uh, who recently passed away, uh, uh, Hideo San, uh, who's from Japan, who took me on to these various uh, monasteries in Japan. And, and it, it completely changed my mindset about um, how to live, how to learn, uh, how to uh, influence others and, and uh, practice uh, of, of mindfulness. Um, so that's kind of my background. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was fascinated by your interpretation when I listened to a, a video clip um, on your website. And you, uh, and also when I look into your book, uh, Everything Connects, you have a very interesting, well, interesting, you have a compelling definition of mindfulness. Uh, for you, mindfulness is to uh, be mindful of what your personality is and beyond that, what your higher self is. So I, I believe I get it right. And uh, when you say uh, being mindful about who I am as my personality here in this world, Uh, it made sense to me right away because otherwise you wouldn't know what makes you happy in life, right? I mean, you wouldn't know uh, what your intentions are in life if you're not mindful of who you are because we are, we are different. Uh, not just that we are born in different places or times, but also we do have different intentions in life. I mean, our different desires create different desires for experiences. So we have different experiences when we get together and we have this dialogue. And so that was very interesting for me. It really some kind of woke me up. Wow, you know, it's not about mindfulness, about, you know, eating. That's all there, you know, or cooking or walking in nature. But it's mindfulness of who I am. So um, my question is, how do you see yourself? I spend a lot of time in reflection. Uh, and, you know, I, I, when I was in college, uh, you know, this is in Southern Illinois University, and I used to be a, a graveyard shift janitor as a student on campus, and I had this supervisor, this uh, wise old, um, uh, you know, uh, Black American who um, would constantly tell me, um, you know, forget about everything, just focus on you and the floor, uh, because I would buff the floor to make it shine on it, you know. And, and that's, that's, you know, uh, because that's all that matters. And I didn't quite understand, um, you know, how can it, that be? I mean, it's such a mundane, silly thing to do to buff your floor or buff the floor um, to make it uh, shine and clean. Uh, but that stayed on with me, you know, and, and what, what, uh, what I didn't realize then, which I have realized many years later, is the fact that it's these this practice of just being uh, at ease uh, wherever your station in life is. And that allows you to connect with yourself. So uh, how you interact with other people, how do you think about things? How do you clean your floor? Um, how, how do you, how, you know, just right now that conversation I'm having with you, these utter focus on this moment is what defines you because It puts an extra effort to, to um, um, you know, uh, fine-tune your thoughts and fine-tune your behavior so that you can portray yourself the way you feel the most good about yourself, right? So, uh, I, I mean, uh, it, it, this is very difficult to achieve, and it takes many years uh, to do that. So, mindfulness is really about, um, it's not about meditation and, you know, why, as you just, like, just like you said, It's really about how you live, you know, and it's how you how you live with uh, gratitude and 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 in the moment and and at peace with yourself, right? And that allows you to discover who you are. Um, so, I mean, you know, um, in, in last few days, you know, in one of the podcasts, the host asked me if you could snap your finger, where would it, where would you like to be? And I said, right here, right now. And I am exactly where I want to be. Uh, the conversation that I'm having with you and the fact that I'm at home with my family, uh, that's, that's exactly where I want to be. I don't have any anxiousness to be somewhere else. You can have ambition, but it's, it's, um, you can have plans, but it's being at ease is how I, I am trying to live. Yes. 
Yes. Well, there are these huge um, notions in Buddhism, right? <clears throat> I mean, interdependent co-origination, and then you have this eternal moment, absolute relativism to this eter- to this now, from the past and from the future, eter- uh, kind of totally relative. And then you have so many other beautiful notions in Buddhism, as well in Hinduism and 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 and, and uh, Taoism. And uh, yeah, it always comes back to this one key insight that uh, we are, we cannot run away from this moment. And we bring ourselves everywhere. I mean, I can escape, I can say, look, I live in the mountains in Mallorca. I live, I like to live closer to the beach, but I will always bring myself there. Right? So if I'm not completely happy and satisfied and something is missing, then I need that mindfulness, which reveals to me what is actually missing in my life. So I feel more fulfilled. So now what I would like to ask you is you have now a third book actually you know and that is about business again spirituality and cooking so what would you tell my audience about spirituality i mean we have um, learned about how you see mindfulness what is spirituality for you see i think the spirituality you know it's not a to me it's not a religious practice uh you know it, it is being connected with uh, yourself and finding the peace in yourself despite all the adversity uh and challenges each one of us faces right so uh, uh i have had plenty of adversity just like billion others uh I'm more fortunate than others. I keep reminding myself of that. But uh, spirituality is really driven from your intention and the devotion you uh, apply uh, to things that you want to do. And as a result, the peace that you want to get from that and not always be anxious about uh, what it could be, should be, would be, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, I mean, I have had professional adversity, uh, where I failed in my vain ventures or or didn't succeed. I have adversity with my uh, family members' health, uh, my mother, my pa- parents, uh, uh, my my son, uh, you know, but but um, you know it, it, when you're grounded and you have an intention to make the best out of whatever the situation is, which is extremely difficult to do, that's when you kind of uh, move yourself at a higher plane and and that to me it it kind of gives you that spiritual connection with uh yourself and whatever is around you and and a higher purpose right so whatever i do these days is for others it's not necessarily just for me the satisfaction i get is byproduct of that uh but um the things that i'm trying to do it's it's for others and that's where i get the biggest pleasure of my life yes uh would you would you say that uh, every adversity does carry the seed of a higher equivalent benefit in it like uh, napoleon hill said that once in his book thinking courage i mean it's my experience what is your experience every adversity yeah i th- yeah, I think adversity is a wonderful, uh, it's hard to, you know, I mean, you don't feel it when you're going through bad times and when you're facing troubles, but, you know, it's what makes us. Uh, and and it, it is a wonderful teacher to, to make you resilient, uh, find out what you really uh, are made of and teaches you uh, things uh, that is uniquely yours. It's not something you can learn from books or you can learn from um, others, uh, uh, you know, a guidance. You, you can get some wisdom, but at the end of the day, um, your adversity is what defines you as who you are. And, and it, 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 the, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful teacher. And I wouldn't take away from uh, from my adversities because I have become who I am because of those adversities, not just because of my successes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. For me also, I mean, it's like almost when you have like really tough adversities, you might just go into the dark night of the soul as the, the mystics, right? Describe it. And, yeah. and it's exactly there, this darkness where you face, where you faced with your higher self and uh, where you see that uh, your subject, subjectivity is real 
even though everything com consists of the outside and the inside, or the inside and the outside, everything connects. And still, you are subjective to it. I mean, obviously, when I think about who I am, I'm nothing and I'm everything, like a fractal existence. And then when I look at the world, I look at it and I see how dependent I am. I mean, I need the light, I need the air and all this. At the same time, however, uh, all day long, I can make so many choices. I'm subjectively inside um, here, present. And I think that is, uh, for me at least, a very deep insight that everything is connected outside and inside, yet for everybody, the inside is subjective. Um, so uh, now what fascinates me with your life is that you have been um, that you have been out for mastery. Everything you do and you did is always being conscious of, of, of attaining that mastery. And you have attained masteries. I mean, way beyond masteries in areas like business. <laughs> like business. I mean, I, I know about it because I have myself been, and we talked about this earlier once uh, in, 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 in uh, conferences about management and business leadership, thought leadership, and, you know, we talked about system thinking and all this. And I'm very impressed by business literature, which is often very, very deep uh, uh, a reflection of ultimate reality at the same time. Right? And so my question here is, how did you uh, become so involved and so focused on business while you are, you have that background of a spiritual master? You know, it's so, 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 you know, there's a, there's a word in, in uh, Bengali and, and um, it's a derivative of, from Sanskrit called Shadona. And, uh, uh, you know, the Nobel laureate uh, Tagore wrote extensively about Shadona. Um, mastery to me it comes from um, devotion, but it's a mastery of yourself. It's not a comparison to somebody else. So when I, talk about mastery or when I talk about, uh, uh, you know, getting better at something, it's really the efforts that I put into to make myself better, a better leader, a better father, um, a better community person, uh, a better uh, business person, a uh, better writer, uh, you know, a better, a better cook, whatever that case may be. Whatever I do, I put that devotion, uh, you know, uh, to make it better, uh, interaction with other people. So it's not really, you know, my, you know, I, I, the, I, I don't, I, I don't equal this mastery with a success or failure um, in the sense that uh, I don't compare myself. Can I be a better business person? Can I make more money? Uh, or can I cook better than somebody else? Or can I write better than somebody else? Uh, that's not my yardstick. My yardstick is, am I better than what I was yesterday? And am I fulfilling uh, what makes me uh, fulfill from the stuff that I'm doing? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, so take for business. My goal in business now is not really, uh, can I build a bigger company? It's uh, It's really about... Whatever am I doing? Is it making any impact or a difference to somebody, uh, to my customer, as an example, right? Or when I'm writing, uh, is as you know that all my pro all the proceeds from my books and stuff uh, is pledged to charity. Uh, so I'm not writing uh, so that do I have a uh, more readers and is it is it selling more? Uh, it's not that. Is it that is my output uh, that I'm producing from my writing? Is it going to add any value if somebody picked up the book or read it, uh, you know, or the courses that I'm creating? If somebody took it, is it going to make any difference in their life? But it doesn't have to be, this impact doesn't have to be monumental. You know, it can be, maybe it, it could be uh, some impact, you know, a, a little spark or a little trigger or a little know-how, whatever it is, you know. So, so my mastery is about mastery of myself not mastery on comparing it with other people or, or uh, you know, it, 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 I don't have a yardstick that says, well, when I, when my company goes to X, XYZ dollar or when my book sells 
uh, you know, this many copies, uh, or when I make this amount of money, that's when I become a master. Uh, it's quite the opposite. Um, so it goes back to that 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 word called sadhana, which is really the, the the devotion to make your oneself better than what you are today is how I define mastery. That is um, again, you know, it's always mind blowing when I hear you talk because. You know, when you think about, usually about devotion, you think maybe something like bhakti yoga, like one of the four kinds of yogas. And we know, sure. you know that is usually you choose one of the hundreds of gods or you choose Jesus, whatever. Uh, you choose uh, because you feel reson you resonate with those gods and then you are basically devoting yourself to it, which is a beautiful thing. However, I know that I'm very different. I like, um, I couldn't work in a hospital, for instance, because there... It's like more like the karma yoga, right? You just serve and sure. do good. And I couldn't be a devotional yoga because I, I just don't, it's not my nature. I like more like this, what is called chinana, um, chinani mm -hmm. yoga. Yoga is like more like philosophical. And then I do mindfulness in order to get to, to dial the, the things I had insights on, or I looked, so to speak, in the mind, uh, like a map, you know, that's my... My, my thinking, uh, with mindfulness, I'm getting it like dialed in and embodied better. Uh, however, you again, you define it so fantastically well, differently. And you said devotional devotion to uh, not the God, but actually to yourself and to becoming a better self. And that is uh, beautiful. And then again, you have the Buddhist, the Buddhist background there also, which I uh, appreciate a lot because when we talk about self, it's really a no self, as we know from Buddha, um, it's uh, not that conception we make about ourselves, that self-image. That's not the, that, that's a, a useful thing, um, but it's not what the real existence, the real reality uh, is, like what the real journey is when you have a map and then you go out and you have a real journey. The map is the thinking, the real journey, the experience without words is the reality. And so uh, again, very interesting the way you see things always. Uh, now tell us a little bit more about cooking. That's not a subject. <laughs> That's one of the main. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, I, I've gotten very, uh, 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 very involved with cooking as the years went by. Um, you know, and and um, yeah, I find a spiritual connection and. Um, so, so when it started is when I first moved to US, uh, uh, you know, I, I really didn't know how to uh, cook anything. And um, so I had to learn a few things from my, my hostel mates, uh, you know, that, that bunch of Vietnamese students who knew how to cook. Uh, so it's kind of started there. So then I ended up working for a, a French bistro and this chef uh, kind of adapted to me, adapted me like a son. She cooked, she taught me a few things and years went by. And then as years went by, as I have traveled across the globe, you know, I picked up things here and there. And I found that cooking comes naturally to me, but also it allows me to be a very, you know, it, it's a to me, it's a practice of mindfulness. I mean, actually, if you talk to a Zen Buddhist, uh, they will say two most important things of the day for them to do is uh, sweeping, uh, and cooking, uh, because that's uh, that that's uh, you know it's outer meditation, but you know cooking is also uh, it, it's my language uh, to to show love for my uh, uh, for people you know whether that's a total stranger or whether, whether that's my family or friends uh, you know it's it's a it's a it's a way of showing love and and care for other folks uh, so and yeah and, and my mother uh, when she was able to cook was the same way. Uh, but I really gotten very involved in global cuisine, and I cook all kind of stuff, uh, stuff from uh, from my own uh, childhood and and uh, my own culture, but also heavily gotten into Japanese cooking and and uh, French cooking and Italian cooking. And to, to cooking is not a recipe; it's a philosophy, you know. And uh, there is no right way or wrong way to cook. Uh, it just uh, if you are in love with it, uh, it will show, you know. And and uh, and I have, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, studied a lot of the, uh, very well-known and accomplished chefs, uh, met some of them, 
uh, ate some of their food and and this that is their religion you know and and that is their path to find uh you know a uh, uh, meaning and an impact so uh and you know i find uh this cooking process uh uh, a way to take care of my family, but also an expression of creativity and and emotion and and love, which is very really um, philosophical. Uh, it's not about a technique or 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 uh, recipes. Yes, it makes perfect sense. <clears throat> Ultimately, you had also listened to another video clip of yours, and you explained what um, actually a new idea is, so to speak. Uh, a new idea is like an old. It's it's old elements, known elements, like in cooking, right? Where and you yeah. talked about cooking, where you know the elements, and a new dish is not something created out of nowhere. It's actually a new arrangement of of known yes. elements, and and that is actually so applicable to business and to all all of life. For for sure, because you know, I mean. Uh... Innovation and creativity is really uh, leveraging uh, whatever exists today and uh, making it different and making it better. Uh, um, and so, so I do, uh, you know, apply that kind of principle in in uh, you know whatever I do. So uh, you know, since we're talking about books and whatnot, you'll see that my my output is based on. Uh, many years of of uh, uh, research and wisdom from uh, many different uh, principles and many different uh, um, you know subject matters uh, and uh, and and highlighting uh, different elements to to make a point right so so I've taken wisdom from da Vinci's way of creating an innovation I have taken uh, wisdom from uh, uh, you know uh, Economists, uh, philosophers, uh, chefs, uh, entrepreneurs, investors, uh, uh, technologists, uh, you know, and, and kind of try to highlight, uh, you know, my viewpoint from their their learning and their teachings. Uh, I, I think the best way to learn and teach is when you learn and teach that already exist and kind of uh, uh, refine yourself uh, from that perspective. Uh, there's no better teacher than history, you know, and uh, history in a broader sense. Uh, so so, so I, I, I apply, try to apply that, whatever I'm, I'm trying to do, business, life, uh, cooking or writing or whatever the case may be. Yes. So, you know, for, for Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, it was one of the main insights that everything is connected right and how what does it mean for you everything connects look it's ability to connect the dot between uh past present and future uh but also is ability to connect the dots between un, you know on the surface that doesn't seems to be connected but it can be connected so since you're talking about da vinci uh, one of the examples we used uh, in Everything Connects uh, a book is the fact that when he was thinking about, uh, you know, flying object, uh, you know, which is really a, a original thought behind uh, planes, you know, the, the, the flights and planes that we have today, he was studying how birds fly and, and how they're um, wing moves and as a result it it moves the air and as a result it stay it you know the bird stays floats and and then you know takes the lift and and then moves forward um so uh, you know it, it's like study something completely different and then applying that that wing to create something different uh, that is really the ability to connect the dots uh, uh something happen so where mindfulness comes in is is really that having the mind to be observant of whatever is going on with utter focus, uh, and then leveraging that learn that learning to create something new. As a result, you have you have the ability to innovate some something completely different than what exists today. Whether that's a new product, new service, new dish, uh, new book, 
whatever the case may be. But this is the connection between mindfulness, creativity, and innovation. Yes. And that applies, by the way, individually, but that also applies in organizationally, which we have have had numerous examples, uh, both in, uh, you know, uh, Everything Connect, but also in Lyft. Yes, I remember Peter Tracker saying a very, very, very um, substant substantial uh, wisdom also here, which connects completely now to what we are talking um, about innovation. He says, like, innovation and marketing are the only um, categories which actually make money in a business. Everything else is a cost. Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, absolutely. Because uh, uh, it, it, it's about value creation, mm -hmm. right? So, so how do you create a value uh, you know, that for somebody else, if you can innovate something, right? So if you're doing the same thing as everybody else, then what's your value, right? Mm -hmm. And and again, that applies uh, to to personal lives, but that also applies to business. And and you have to get that word out, right? So so how do you get that word out that you have something unique to provide to other people? Uh, you know, so that's where the marketing comes in, and even marketing can be innovative. Anything can be innovative, yes. right? So, so uh, I mean, you can spend millions of dollars for marketing, or you can uh, maybe uh, uh, you know uh, get your words out uh, uh, with, with thought leadership, mm -hmm. right? So, so um, either way, uh, you know, even in that realm, there is uh, innovation and creativity that can be applied. Well, uh, Faisal, this was a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for having been on the show. It was a real pleasure and learning experience and I really am grateful that you took the time and uh, probably from cooking because over there I'm here in Mallorca Spain and you are in Connecticut right so it's it's about yes. getting noon <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, so so for thanks for having me Joseph appreciate it uh, I really enjoyed this conversation these are it's a perfect conversation for a Sunday morning and uh, because it's uh, it's not something you can uh, do, you know. It's it's a deeper conversation, so it's usually better when your mind is not cluttered with other yes. things. And it's uh, very easy to get a hold of you. You have uh, the website. If you would just say it and spell it for everybody, because of my Austrian accent. Sure, no problem. I mean, you can find me uh, on the internet just about anywhere. Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, or if you do Google search, uh, the books are available everywhere, uh, airport stores, uh, as well as in 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 uh, Amazon and Barnes and Noble and etc. Uh, but uh, best, you know, I mean, if you want to know, uh, you know, if you if you want to stay current with whatever I'm doing, the best place to go is my personal website, which is FaisalHawk.com. F A I S A L H O Q U E dot com. It's F A I S A L H O Q U E dot com. So that's where all this stuff is. So whether that's uh, um, you know artificial intelligence, uh, business techniques, uh, food, or spirituality, it's all there. So thank you also to my dear listeners for joining us today. The recap of the show with bullet points are in the show notes, and with all the links mentioned during the interview, with the website. Uh, if you like this podcast, please subscribe to have you here again for our next episode. This is your host, Joseph Schinwald. Thank you and goodbye until we meet again. Mm -hmm.